Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, and back with me, of course, is the Amazing Gamer. Hello, everybody. Yeah, go ahead and tell them what we're reviewing. Today, folks, we will be once again continuing the marathon of Jurassic Park, and today we'll be looking at, of course, Jurassic Park 3, the final park of the series as well. Yes, and if I haven't, and if I've, I've, and I've established this before, this actually is my favorite Jurassic Park film. Um... Uh, yeah, and this came out in two thousand one, and uh, this you know this was a many a couple of years even after say the first sequel had came out, and it would take a couple of a couple of years later for the next one to happen, and this time not directed by Steven Spielberg. This time it was directed by a uh, well-known director Joe Johnson, and he was a yeah he was a good choice for directing this and. Neither say John and John Williams didn't return for to do the music and such, but you know he did su he did suggest who should be the composer and yeah. Uh, but we'll start with you. Like, what are the first things you have to say about the film? I honestly do have mixed feelings about this movie. On <laughs> one hand, it's great to see like and seeing you know as as you said, Spielberg wasn't back for this one. It was still shocking to see the actor of Alan Grant returning at all. Sam Neill. Um, and the way they wrote him back in was, you know, it was pretty cool. It was pretty clever. And the CGI isn't bad. The animatronic movement on this is actually pretty good for yeah. the Jurassic Park movie being the first one to not be directed by Spielberg. Um, and there are some key moments in this movie that I'd even say, like, are paired to be as good as the original Jurassic Park. It's got some really good stuff in here. And the comedy as well with the kid character that we see in a bit. Yeah. He's amazing. And there's actually quite a fun fact about him as well, which I'll bring up later. Okay. Um, and yeah, because that's the thing, because, um, yeah, the, the kid, Eric, and uh, I think, yeah, his, like, kind of stepdad, I guess, Ben, like, they were, like, paragliding around that, that island of dinosaurs, and even, like, the guys that were on the boat, they were mysteriously, like, eaten by the dinosaurs, you know, through, like, this mist, and... You know, Ben and Eric, they're all along, they, they detach from the boat, and they're now, like, going to the island, and even, like, say, we see, like, Alan Grant and uh, Ellie, who is now a mother and is married to, you know, somebody else, and uh, also, um, uh, I'm trying to, even, like, say that one sequence where, you know, um, Alan is at this, like, panel, whatever, and, you know, like, when, 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 like, that that woman says, anybody have a question for Dr. Alan Grant? And there's a lot of hands raised. And yeah, even Alan even says this. Does anybody have a question that does not relate to Jurassic Park or the incident at San, of, of San Diego, which I was not involved in? So, And even like he's asked about, you know, about the dinosaurs and, you know, even mentionings of John Hammond and such. And, you know... Even, like, one one girl asks uh, Dr. Alan Grant, you know, he wouldn't get on the island to study them and, and et cetera, and he's like, nobody, you know, on Earth or Heaven, anything, however he says it, will get me back on that island. Uh, do, we have a, do you have anything to say on that sequence? Yeah, it's pretty obvious to tell that even though he felt happy with, like, the outcome of the first movie, I can understand his, like his frustration of even thinking about going back because there were a lot of close calls in the first movie where he could have died and where his actions could have possibly gotten others killed because they were up against a bunch of raptors and he knows that if he ever went back he would probably not be as lucky as he was no. because the island is now deserted there is no security or electricity whatsoever there is no saving them if they go back so the reasoning for him not going back makes a lot of sense exactly but of course, this is a movie. He's got to go back. Of course he does. He is convinced in a way. So, okay. And then, even after that sequence, we do get the introduction of these three guys that do help get them on the island, of course. Cooper, Nash, and Udetsky. What do, what do we have to say about these three? I think they are actually pretty well-written characters, especially um, one of them is played by William H. Macy. Well, he's not, well, yeah, William H. Macy, he hires them, basically. Yes, and I do like his performance as a... Paul Kirby. I think he's the father of the kid that we see later in the movie as well. That is correct, yeah. And William H. Macy, he plays Paul Kirby and his ex-wife, uh, yeah, Amanda Kirby. Yes. Yeah, and, okay, and about the three guys, well, the, you know, Bruce Young plays Nash, uh, Cooper's played by John 
Dial, I think that's how you say that last name, and Mr. Udetsky is played by Michael Jeter, and there's a story I have to share about uh, Michael Jeter, and this is the, like, this is, like, to, to you viewers and to you too, Amazing Gamer, because I even, I was even telling Mr. Gamer a few times during one of our calls, and even after, say, we were done filming, and when we were talking about the plans of the Jurassic Park Marathon, and I mentioned him about this story about Michael Jeter, so here we go. So, the story about, like, my story on this is this. When I was watching Jurassic Park 3 years back, you know, and I think with my mom too, when it came up to the introduction of the three guys, Nash, Cooper, and Udetsky, and when we come up to Udetsky, you know, the phone rings with that jingle, um, you know, my mom was like, pa like, paused the movie and was asking me who that was, and if I recognized him, and I remember this very well, because she was asking me who that was, and I was like, Mr. Noodle, and he was like, and she was like, yeah, that's Mr. Noodle, like, because he was Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle in Elmo's world. <laughs> that's the... Yeah, I think I do remember actually seeing him in Elmo's world, because I think I had a, a DVD of that when I was a kid as well. Yeah, so that's the story, that's my story of, you know, Michael Jeter and his appearance in Jurassic Park 3, because, yeah, I... I, at the yeah, because at the time I remembered him best for you know as Mr. Noodle's brother, Mr. Noodle. So there's that, and uh, also like more characters that come in, of course, like uh, uh, Billy, uh, played by Alessandro Navola. Nav I think that's how you say his full name. Like, what do we what do we have to say about Billy? Well, Billy <laughs> was uh, he was quite a. An interesting character while while he lasted. Um, yeah, he wasn't my favorite in the movie, but he did have his moments. Like, he did. There wasn't too much to think about him, at least when I first saw the movie. Yeah, same here. I, yeah, a little bit, and that's when yeah, because Alan meets uh, you know, Paul Kirby and uh, Amanda, and they invite him. They invite them to dinner, like both Alan and Billy, and that's when. Alan is convinced to go to the island, and thus, you know, they're on this, like, small plane, they make their way to the island, and even Alan seeing the dinosaurs, he's like, you know, I've forgotten what this was all like, and, and even when, okay, bef right before they get to the island, like, Alan, like, did, like, go to sleep at one point, and that one scene, like, he's dreaming, where, like, the plane is totally empty, and he comes face to face with this one velociraptor, and he says, Alan, what do we? Have yeah, that one clip of the raptor sitting in the plane seat, t talking to him. That has been that's another meme that came out of this franchise that everyone knows. Oh yeah, even even like Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critic, what what he what he did with that too. <laughs> yeah, for those yeah who have who have seen his review, Dress Park Three, like us. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so of course yeah, they get to the island, of course, and. Even when, like, say, you know, um, they do come face-to-face -face with a new dinosaur, a new foe, the Spinosaurus, he, like, kills, he first kills Cooper and then Nash, like, even, like, causing the plane to crash, um, and that, and, okay, what are the first things we have to say about the Spinosaurus? The Spinosaurus, I really like it, because in that first shot when we see like when we actually first see him when he breaks or when the, the plane breaks in half and he leans up and roars like we see it in animatronic form and it is a really creepy design like the beady eyes on that thing are so soulless and they just look it's a really neat design for a dinosaur it's something i hadn't actually seen before i think it was the first dinosaur that actually scared me as well because i remember having nightmares about the spinosaurus when i was a kid so good job <laughs> yeah, and not to mention that sequence where the Spinosaurus and T-Rex, you know, fight off against each other. What do we have to say about that? It was a pretty cool scene as well, and a great, um, it was a good diversion for the heroes, but, like, um, I was not expecting, like, as soon as I saw the T-Rex get stomped on the floor, I was like, nah, nah, the T-Rex is gonna be fine, it's the T-Rex, it's been here for two movies, then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, uh, breaks, okay. snap, snaps the that neck, happens. yeah. It did happen, yeah. And that shows that, yeah, the Spinosaurus is kind of unstoppable, and he's basically the main dinosaur that, that like, tries to attack and eat our main characters. Definitely. And I think it's, like, it's a nice change of pace, because we did have... I think they did it because, like, the new director felt like the T-Rex was a bit forced in the second movie, 
So they felt like, oh, if we just bring in a, a different kind of dinosaur, same kind of dinosaur, yeah. like big, jawed and stuff, but this is a new thing, and hopefully everyone will like the Spinosaurus, which mm-hmm. I definitely did. I did too, yeah, I did too, same here. Um, and of course, you know, they find out that the parachute, like the paraglider, because it because it landed in the tree, Ben did not survive. However, like uh, Eric is still out there on the island, and like they also like come across that like deserted building. And if if the island that they're on is the same island from the second film, uh, and with the the deserted building, and that's when of course they come face to face with the raptors, and one of them like being said like, and even as Nostalgia Correct referred to them as the Mohawk Raptors. Like, do we have anything to say? The Mohawk Raptors. Yeah, the yeah. Raptors designed in this movie. They were. They were a little weird, especially when they weren't in animatronic form as well. They did look a little bit strange, I okay. will admit. But, you know, it was a new design. They were just trying some new things with this movie to see what could stick to the wall. I think that was mainly the premise of the movie, just experimenting with a new director, seeing what sticks to the wall of the new Jurassic Park. Yeah, true. Um, and, uh, even when, say, like, there's a stampede that happens, some of the characters do get deserted, like, they get separated, and even when, say, Udetsky meets his, you know, uh, comes face-to-face with the rap- raptors, and, you know, he gets, he gets crushed, like, his spine gets crushed, his back, and, yeah, he, his neck gets snapped, and, yeah, do we have anything, anything to say on that? It was quite a dark scene, I will admit. Like, watching that as a kid, there were a lot of scenes in this movie which really did scare me. And that was quite rare, despite what happened in the previous two movies, with, like, the lawyer in the first and uh, the the bad guy at the end of the second one. And this was the one that really scared me. Mm. These films, like, had gotten more edgy as time went on. And that's not a complaint. I, I do like it when they go over the edge like that. Yeah, me too, yeah. And that's when, of course, Alan does come face to face with Eric, and of course eventually they do, they all meet up again, and also because Nash had the the phone with the jingle, of course he ate, you know, Nash, like even the Spinosaurus had had swallowed the telephone as well, the phone basically. Yeah, and uh, when I was a kid I always used to make the joke when the the T-Rex, oh not the T-Rex, the Spinosaurus, Spinosaurus, and the phone was rumbling and ringing from inside of him, I used to think, huh, the phone's in his butt. He's butt dialing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm sure. And even do you remember like this was in Nostalgia Critics review? Like because when the characters they they come face to face with the Spinosaurus, like Doug Walker, you know, he did a joke where you know it's like the Spinosaurus saying this, you know, you have a missed call. <laughs> yeah, you have a missed call. I feel like that's kind of like maybe what the like the Spinosaurus is doing. I, I don't know. Uh, judging by his like his his expressions and and so I I don't know but something like that um, and exactly and um, I do remember as soon as this genuinely made me laugh this movie had some good humor in it um, when Grant and um, oh what was the kid's name Eric <sighs> Eric when Grant and Eric get through the little hole in the fence and it seems like they're safe and they're heading towards the building mm-hmm. uh, they're like okay good we're safe and the Spinosaurus is stuck behind the fence. <laughs> Nope, you're not rid of it yet. Yeah. Off a lot as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost forgot about that. And something, and I was about to mention this, we do find out that because with the Velociraptors on their tail, Ben had stolen a couple of Velociraptor eggs. Yes, he was, mm. uh, I believe he was trying to pull a Nedry in the first movie and sell them. Yeah, but I think he he did admit that he 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 realized that it was a stupid thing to do. Yeah. So at least he wasn't totally heartless, and it's just a shame when he realized what he did was wrong, it was too late. Exactly. And that whole sequence, when even Alan Grant realizes that they're in a bird cage, which being, of course, the for the vlog, for, not, ugh, I get it mixed up, the tri- oh my gosh, the pterodactyls, god, uh, what are we- <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I get, like, m- names mixed up, you know, dinosaurs, but yeah, the pterodactyls, the whole birdcage sequence, what do we have to say on that? It was a pretty creepy scene, because, like, uh, that yeah. one segment of just Eric walking out into the mist on the catwalk. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, okay, I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> then all of a sudden, a pterodactyl jumps out and just grabs him, and it's, it actually oh, did give soon. me, it made me jump even more recently when I watched it. Uh-huh. Um, 
Because with the realization of the mist kind of clearing and seeing, oh, they're in the aviary. Oh, no. And then you oh, just yeah. see it jump out. And it's like, oh, God, he's taking him to his nest. And you can see the babies. Oh, they're going to peg at him and they're going to eat him alive. <laughs> it was a legitimately tense scene. And I really like it. Yeah. And Ben, because earlier, Ben and Alan, they retrieved the paraglider. It was still in good condition. Ben used the paraglider and... He sacrificed himself to save Eric, and, like, he became a hero at that point, and even it seemed like that all hope for Billy was, you know, like, didn't—was lost, and he was being attacked by the the pterodactyls. Like, anything to say on that? Yeah, it was actually— Like, I genuinely thought Billy was going to die, because, like, from the beginning of the movie, he seemed like the kind of— the clumsy oath yeah. that made stupid decisions yeah. and one decision after another would eventually get him killed, but... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Um, and, uh, yeah, because, again, he sacrificed himself to save Eric, and now it's only, say, you know, Kirby, uh, Amanda, and Bill, and, and, and Eric, and Dr. Grant. They're the only one... They're the only four that are still... that have still survived. They... They, they get this boat out, and they ride it, and of course, there's this moment where they, you know, with the Jurassic Park music playing, like, the, the Brachiosaurus, like, you know, they're there, and and I, I've seen this, and again, like, mentioning the Stoucher Critics review, he points out that the Brachiosaurus look almost a bit terrifying, because especially their coloring and, and, and so on, and mentioning of, like, say, the Joker, I don't know, do you have any, do you have any, anything to say? Yeah, the Brachiosaurus designs were very off in this movie, and it's like, oh, uh, uh, they don't look like the first movie, and I don't know if this is meant to be the... Is this meant to be the same island as the first movie, though? Was that established in the film? Well, I don't know. I mean, as I said, as I said a little bit earlier, if I, if, if it's, if it is, like, because I have a feeling that, I don't know, like, Either it, 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 because I feel, I want to say that my guess is it could be the island that they, that they were on in the second film and with that deserted building that they're in. I don't, I don't even know. And maybe because we probably have to look that up very carefully and just know what that island is. Yeah, I think I even remember us discussing, like, when we were talking about the T-Rex last night. Yeah. The T-Rex from this movie I don't think it is the same one. No, it's not. No, it's not. the T-Rex in the first movie is in Jurassic World. Yeah, Jurassic World has established... The first Jurassic World film has established this, the whereabouts and what happened to the T-Rex in the first Jurassic Park film. Of course, when we review Jurassic World, so we'll talk... We'll, of course, talk more about that. And another thing is about the Barachiosaurus, yeah, because they're looking design in the third film, and when the one Barachiosaurus was kind of roaring... I couldn't under. I was having trouble, like no wondering where his eyes was, and that was right before the movie fades to the next scene. Well, right, right before it fades to the next scene, we do see his eyes. Like I was having trouble wondering where his eyes were. Yeah, I do feel like that. That was either intentional, like they've been clawed out by a raptor or something, or it was maybe just a a rendering error with CGI. I feel. I, I feel like a rendering error, basically. I, I don't know. But um, also, a little bit later on in the evening, because they do hear that cell phone ringing again, and that's when it's in, like, the dinosaur doo-doo, basically, obviously from the Spinosaurus, and of course they do find it, and there's this one dinosaur that comes up, like, what do we have to say on that part, of that one dinosaur coming up, and then he just leaves? Anything? <laughs> oh, God, yeah, my mic was... Uh broken that um oh. was it the was it the red dinosaur he had yeah. like a he had like a horn or something on somewhere around his fore, fore, forehead oh yeah him i used to call him the unisaur as a kid yeah <laughs> he was the unisaur uh, it was a bit weird to have him just walk by like turn just to i think it was animated with cgi entirely that night so he just walked on the yeah. scene and just looked at them and was like mm, okay and just walked away it's like what was the point of that they could have cut that out of the film and wouldn't have made a difference I know. And I think even, like, the look on their faces, like, I, they're, I don't know, because they're, maybe they're a bit confused, I don't know. But that's when, a little bit later on, in, like, when it, now it starts storming, and Alan is call, calls, you know, Ellie, but of course her son picks up the phone, and, you know, it's the dinosaur man, you know, take the phone to mommy now, it's the dinosaur man, and Charlie, that's his name, Charlie, but of course, you know, the, the door is locked, and her mom's outside, and, you know, of course, I have to wait until her mom comes back in, you know, smart kid. And he does on, okay, 
between that and what's going on, you know, with our characters, you know, Alan Grant and so on, they have the Spinosaurus out of nowhere rises out of the water, the ocean, I guess, and he, the, the Spinosaurus starts attacking them. During that, we also have with Charlie, he's watching Barney on TV. <laughs> Yes, and this is a this is the joke with Eric that I can finally make, which a nostalgic critic actually called back to. Um, so Eric, the the actor of Eric was also in a Barney the Dinosaur movie, which was Barney's Great Adventure. Oh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize. Yeah, it was the same kid, and he was also the kid that just didn't like Barney at all. And I remember in the nostalgic critic's review of Barney's Great Adventure. The actor of Eric said, I wish I could go on a real adventure. Do something more exciting. Be careful what you wish for. Just cut to a scene of Jurassic Park 3 of him being taken away by a pterodactyl. Uh, yeah, I didn't... I mean, I've seen Nostalgia Kirk's review of Barney's Great Adventure, but I, I don't recall that part. I need to go back and look. But I didn't realize that... Okay, the, the kid actor who played Eric and was in Barney's Great Adventure, his name, you know, played, you know... The actor's name, Trevor Morgan. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that Trevor Morgan was in the Barney film, and thus, just a few years later, he would be in Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredibly convenient, and both movies have Barney in them. I feel like that was, like, a joke in... Like, I think that was an inside joke in the movie production or something. You'd be like, hey, let's make a Barney reference. Yeah. He and, was in it. and that's also a big coincidence... That is a pretty big coincidence, and I'm glad. I hope that was intentional as well. Yeah, I'd say so, probably. Um, and, of course, you know, it seems at one point our characters are drowning. They're in this cage, and they're drowning in the water, even when, you know, Ellie does, like, answer the phone, and, like, Alan could barely, like, say anything. And I think even kind of Ellie kind of starts realizing, even, I guess, when Charlie's like, rah, rah, and... Of course, they do manage to get out of the cage, and uh, I, Amanda kind of being attacked by the Spinosaurus only because, like, the Spinosaurus claws are digging into her, while Kirby is distracting the Spinosaurus and causes fire to happen, and he falls, and it seems that he might be dead, and the Spinosaurus, he, run, he runs off, like, he walks away, like, well, that's a way for, that's an interesting way for the Spinosaurus to defeat, and Kirby is okay, and of course they come face to face with the Raptors once more, and they give the they give them they give the Raptors their eggs back, and that's when the the Navy, the soldiers, every they they all come in and they 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 fetch Alan and all the others, and of course that was Ellie's doing, and Alan saying God bless you, Ellie. Okay, but do you have anything to say on what I was talking about? What I've just now been saying? Yeah. Um... I don't know, like, how Ellie... It's pretty clever that Ellie knew, because, like, her son could have meant anything by going just rah, 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 at the phone <laughs> when Ellie was there, but it's like... I, I want to know how she literally knew that Alan, one, was on the island, two, how he was being attacked, and three, how he could have possibly needed a phone call to get out of there. But, you know, yeah. those, are all just, those are just nitpicks, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And another thing is, Billy, he had survived. Indeed, Billy had survived. And I think it was like, that was touched on just as InGen. It was InGen, by the way, that Ellie called, which is uh, also interesting. They, again, keeping that consistent InGen uh, property stuff, where they yeah. are passive-aggressive on the history of Jurassic Park. Exactly, yeah. And the epilogue, like, they, you know, they're, they're all, like, going home in a helicopter, and the pterodactyl's flying away, and, like, even one last shot of Alan Grant putting on his hat, because, yeah, even he lost his hat at one point, and Billy retrieved that, and, of course, he puts it on, and what a, what a wait for that being the last shot of Alan Grant, Sam Neill, and with the helicopter flying, and then it fades to the pterodactyl's flying. That, that, was, a, that was a nice way for, for Jurassic Park 3 to end. Yeah, and also the the main trilogy of the Park series as well. Exactly, yeah. Um, and you realize this that there's not there's not a lot of characters were die in this. There's only a, just a few characters that were killed in this film, and those, of course, being the two guys in the boat, uh, uh, Ben and uh, the three guys, Cooper, Nash, and Udetsky. Yeah, which is a pretty low count for a Jurassic Park 
uh, movie kill counter, but yeah. still. Oh, oh yeah. Impressive. Yeah, even the... I think they did learn as well not to rely on the um, the shock and like kill off the human characters because dinosaurs factor. That's a good way to go. Yeah, and almost forgot even like one dinosaur dies, and that of course being the T Rex. Yeah. And that was a bold move to pull, but in my opinion, it worked pretty well because yeah. Spinosaurus is yeah. very memorable. Yeah, at least it wasn't the T-Rex, say, from the first Jurassic Park film. That was a relief. Yeah, I, I'm glad they didn't take it that far. Exactly. Yeah, no way would they want to do that, pretty much. But anyways, so any last things to say on Jurassic Park 3? Um, yeah, again, like the second movie, it gets a bad reputation. There are some really golden... Uh, things in this movie like the actors are putting on some of the actors fall a little flat like um uh the mother of eric i can't remember her name uh, uh, sarah. Am amanda Just, no amanda sarah was in the second movie um, yeah but eric stole the show he is still my favorite character in this movie and my favorite line from him is um when alan says what is this TRXP. Yeah. How did you get it? You don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that at one point, and yeah, you and and you did so that because that was a pretty funny that was a pretty funny moment there. Because yeah. I I don't and think cause... I, I want to know how he even adapted to an island of carnivorous dinosaurs, even though he's just a kid. It's like you could literally leave him here; he'd be totally fine. Yeah, and he's uh, we can tell. Yeah, he's a very smart he's a very smart boy for sure. Yeah, and, I'm glad they didn't do the trope because, like, they kept the consistency with, like, Lex and Tim. They're kids, but they're not stupid. And yeah. I'm glad that's consistent through all of the Jurassic Park and even the world movies. I'm glad that's a thing. Yes, I totally agree. Um, and uh, there was something else. Oh, yeah. It would be nice. Like, who knows? Like, maybe they are keeping it secret. I was talking about this with, with Amazing Gamer at one point that... Uh, like, maybe the possibility of any character from any past Jurassic Park films making an appearance in the law in Jurassic World Dominion, and the possibility of Eric could be one of them. Seeing Eric in Dominion would be a treat for me. It would be a treat. I'd love to see him again, because I feel like a lot of people would like to see him again, because everyone loved Eric. I don't remember anyone that complained about him. Yeah, but another thing is, like, Jurassic Park 3... We all know that it didn't receive well, but there are some people that, like us, that do that do like this film. Yeah, and I'm glad that like I'm glad that they did even give the franchise a chance after the third movie because yeah, the next movie with the reboot definitely delivered well. Yeah, because one decade later, after after the last Jurassic Park film, we would of course get Jurassic World, and even like say after the passings of say you know, of uh, John Hammond, the actor John Hammond, and, you know, the the author of the Jurassic Park films, yeah. But anyways, but to wrap things up, how do we how do we rate Jurassic Park 3? I think I'd rate this one a 6 out of 10. It's just on the line, like, I think it's just perfectly balanced, but like 10% down from the second movie. It's like the second movie I gave a 7, this yeah. one I gave a 6. Because, like, the romantic relationship between the mother and father of Eric, yeah. it's a little thin, but I'm able to see through it with more Spinosaurus and Eric and intensity. It's still fun. Yeah, and it seems as though that it is kind of... Me it seems as though that at the end of the film, they... they because even though that, yeah, Paul and Paul and Amanda were divorced, it seemed that they are slightly getting back together, you know? Yeah, okay. that was a little weird. It's like... And also the completely off-screen, unexplained chemistry between Alan and uh, Dr. Sattler of them just being divorced, even though they seemed happy by the end of the first. It's like, oh, well, they're divorced. That, that was kind of sudden. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and as for me, I'm going to give this, because how much I love Jurassic Park 3 and this being my favorite, I will, I mean, I'll just, I'll, I'll do it as this. I'll give it. I'll give it an eight out of ten. I mean, I love Jurassic Park three. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It is without a doubt my all time favorite Jurassic Park film. And yeah, so that's it right there. Um, and now that we've reviewed the Jurassic Park trilogy, now we've come to we're we're coming up to the Jurassic World films. Only there's only two that we have to review. So have that to look forward to. And then and and the the two Jurassic World films being the last two for the Jurassic World Jurassic Park marathon, I should say. And thank you once again, Amazing Gamer, for joining me reviewing Jurassic Park three. And until we dive right into Jurassic World.
Mike cut off. Was that was that the outro? Yeah, that was like well, the, I mean, okay, I was yeah, I was I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> oh right, um, should I say something now then, or we stopped? Yeah, no, we didn't stop. No, I was just saying okay, um, until yeah. you know until we we dive right into the Jurassic World films. Yes, indeed, and it's been it's been great fun to look uh, look at these past few Jurassic parks and. It's also been nice to rewatch them and walk away with a different opinion now because before I, I didn't think much of the second and third, but after reviewing them and looking at them again, there's there's some good stuff in here. Absolutely. And to anyone that hasn't watched the previous two movies, like two and three, and just go right to one and skip to well, please give the two movies a chance. I think there's some stuff in there that you might like now. Absolutely. So with all that being said, we hope you've enjoyed our review of jurassic park 3 and until again me and amazing gamer we review we now dive into we net we dive into uh the jurassic world films next we'll see you guys in the next video slash review and once again thank you amazing gamer no problem yep and until we review jurassic world the first one in the installment of the jurassic world trilogy take care and peace out the jurassic park marathon is still continuing